Wow, thank you. I, I didn't know I had to follow that up. Uh, <laughs> all right, kids, uh, let's go home. Uh, <laughs> hey, um, like Ian said, um, we're starting something new every fifth Sunday. Um, we want to say, hey, kids, we're not just for you. you we're, you're with us, right? So we're, and uh, I get the privilege of kind of kicking off this new experiment and, uh, and doing intergenerational worship. Um, so kids, I'm going to keep this short. Those are famous last words of preachers. Never believe them, right? <laughs> so I will try my best. So I'm going to start off with a prayer. And so I want to invite you to pray with me. This is a prayer for wisdom and learning. Um, this writer named Dorothy Sayer who lived uh, a while ago. So let me pray. Um, incarnate wisdom, Holy Father, inform our minds. And let us not lie in the dull sloth of stupidity, nor live content to be ignorant, but make us to become as little children to sit with you at the feet of the learned, both hearing and asking questions. You that with wonderful cunning did contrive the brain, forgive our neglect and misuse of your most excellent handiwork. Upon our foolishness, our falsehood, our trickery, our cheating, upon our evil imagination, do you have mercy. Teach us to know right that we might rightly teach our children. And where we have taught them lies, do you instruct them that our sins not be avenged upon the innocent and deliver us from the pride of the intellect that usurps the throne of God and from the pride of ignorance that spits in the face of God. For you, O Christ, are wisdom and reason. You are the living word of truth that with the Father and the Holy Spirit dwells unchanged in the light unapproachable world without end. Amen. I don't need to add too much to what Walter did. That was uh, amazing. Thank you, Walter, wherever you are. Um, so I want to just kind of briefly go through this passage with us, kids. Um, you know, it's First Samuel, this passage reads a lot like a graphic novel. If you've, if you've done a lot of graphic novel, which I have not, so I had to brush up on this a little bit, there's always a little thing called the origin story, and, and that's... Uh, where you go back to look at how the character, where this character came from. And in our passage today, it reminds me a lot like when I was a kid, we used to play this thing called pin dodgeball. I don't know, anybody played pin dodgeball? So this is not just regular dodgeball. You put uh, bowling ball pins, and the goal of this game is not just to knock out other players, but you have to knock the pins down. Whoever knocks all the pins down wins. Now, before the game starts, there's a, there's a little period called the anxiety period um, <laughs> during recess time, and that's where the teacher picks two students, and they get the privilege of selecting the team. I don't know. I never had this. I, you might have had this, but this is where this thing called anxiety comes up, where you're like, don't be picked last, right? You don't want to be that kid who is picked last. This is the stuff of, of, of a famous book called Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Um, in our passage here, David comes from a family with eight sons, probably uh, more, more sisters as well. But here we have eight sons. Jesse shows up, is going to select from one of them, and David is picked last. He's not even picked last. He's not even there. 
There's a big barbecue party. Samuel shows up, is going to select, and you see what Walter did. The first son, impressive. Second, third, there's seven, four, five, six, seven. None of them picked. And David has to be brought in from the field. Not only is he chosen last, he's not even part of the ceremony. You know, kids, I want to say two truths today, two teaching moments. One is that our Lord says, I don't look at the appearance, the outward appearance. God looks at our hearts. Outward appearance doesn't matter. It's the heart, the inside. And it's such an important lesson, right? We learn things like don't judge a book by its cover. All that glitter is not gold. I had to look that up. Apparently, it's from Shakespeare. Um, Merchant of Venice? Yes. (laughs) Can we take a step back? Like, for real? That is really difficult. I know that's a good lesson. But the reality, I don't know about you, but the reality as I grew up was appearance really mattered. In fact, the whole economy of Instagram is based on this premise of appearance, how you look. We are judged by our outer appearance. You know, I was acutely aware of this when I was growing up. Um, As a small little Korean-American boy living in a small town named Charlottesville. I still remember in my third grade class, my teacher sat me next to this kid who was Japanese and asked me to help him, you know, translate. And I didn't have the heart to tell her. I was like, you know, we don't speak the same language, right? But I just kept quiet and then, you know, we would kind of gesture at each other. I, I don't know exactly what happened there. You know, if you, if you ever experienced um, where you have been judged by the outer appearance and acutely felt the hurt of not being seen, this is, this is the story. And God's core value here says God is radically different than what the world does to us. Right? That, that is the story. Our identity, your identity and your value are not dependent on your appearance. That's what God says. How others see you. God says, I see you for who you really are. I see your heart. I see the inside. I see your character. I know your concerns, your worries, what you really are thinking. And this is really, really good news. And then there's also a little bit of a dark side there, right? If God really, really knows me, you know, there's like the hidden embarrassing parts that you don't want anyone to know. This is not what I do. Maybe this is what you do. Like you pick your nose in secret. You have stinky feet. You secretly uh, smell your your baby blanket when no one's watching. I don't do these things. <laughs> God knows even that part. God knows about that part of David, and yet God anoints David, a little shepherd boy, to become the shepherd of his people. And then we, we see that's our God. That's God's value. You know, Isaiah says um, this in 11, uh, chapter 11. It says, out of the stump of David will grow a shoot, a new branch bearing fruit from old root, and the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, 
And he will delight in obeying the Lord, and he will not judge by appearance, nor make decisions based on hearsay. He will give justice to the poor, make fair decisions for the exploited. The earth will shake at the force of his word, and one breath out from his mouth will destroy the wicked. And he will wear righteousness as a belt, truth like an underwear. David, who is the neglected shepherd boy, becomes the shepherd of God's people. And David's story points to something else. The good shepherd. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. Jesus says, I know my sheep, and the sheep know me. You know, kids, I want to wrap it up. God sees us, knows us, and calls us. You know what God called David? His beloved. We are God's beloved. That's a fancy word for saying God deeply loves you. And God knows how hard it is to live in this world that judges our outer appearance. But our God does not judge by outward appearance. God knows us, knows the good, knows the embarrassing. And God still says, come follow me. Right? Spirit of God, who covers the anointing of David, will cover us with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I want to, as, as I end, I want to say, uh, kids and also older kids, uh, we have a prayer ministry over there. And if God has spoken in ways that you want to receive prayer, sometimes it can just be like, I want to pray with someone and say, God, thank you that you are my shepherd that provides all my need. And I can say the song of Psalm 23. God, you are my shepherd. I lack nothing. For others, maybe God is speaking to us today and saying, there are things that I need God to be my shepherd. Whatever it is, I want to let you know that this space is open for us to receive prayer. Um, So as I do that, I'm going to ask the worship team to come on up and let me close in prayer and also invite you uh, to receive prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are our shepherd, that you gesture towards David, a shepherd boy anointed the shepherd of your people. We thank you that you see us for who we are, that you call us your beloved. We turn to you in all our needs, in all our thanks and gratitude. We thank you that you are our good shepherd. Help us to follow you in obedience. Help us to follow you in faith. We ask this in your